We're going to go through a worksheet on solving species balances, element balances, or using extensive reaction to solve uh, for the no amount of species coming out of a reactor. So in the first case, we're going to use a molecular species balance. Okay. In the second case, we're going to use an atomic element balance. And in the third case, we'll use an extensive reaction balance. Okay, so we're going to first of all start with just the degree of freedom analysis. Um, and, uh, and let me just introduce um, this reactor first. Okay, so we have, uh, we have propane coming in, okay, and also water coming in. And uh, we're going to be producing carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And then we also have some unreacted. Uh, some of our reactants that came in are also going to leave. Uh, we didn't react all of them. Okay, so um, in this case, um, we're going to have the molar flow rate of, uh, of propane. It's 200 moles per minute. We are not given the molar flow rate of hydrogen. And uh, we also need to calculate the molar flow rate of uh, CO, um, H2, and uh, propane, and water. Okay, so we need to calculate the molar flow rates um, of, of water and then also these other four. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our degree of freedom analysis. We'll just go ahead and start, um, we'll just start with that. So we have unknowns. Um, these are all molar flow rates. I'll just go ahead and put the dot over these. Uh, so that gives us five uh, variables. Now we also have uh, one reaction as well. So this will add a degree of freedom, and this, these will add degrees of freedom as well. And then um, anytime we have a species balance, that's an equation or other equations that will take away degrees of freedom. Okay, so we have, in this case, we have uh, four okay, uh, species balances. Now you could either do an overall uh, molar uh, balance or with three additional species balances or you could do four species balances. Either way you have four. Okay, and then you have um, zero other equations. Okay, in this case, then we're gonna have um, two degrees of freedom. So we would need to specify two things in order to solve this problem. Okay, so let's, um, let's just say that uh, we're gonna specify that we had 65% conversion of the propane and also 25% excess um, water. Okay, so, so what is that? Uh, let's start just uh, calculating how much is gonna come out. So we had uh, 200 moles per minute, and let's say 65% of that was converted. Okay, so 130 uh, moles per minute is uh, is consumed. Um, so that's moles of the propane. Okay, that's going to be consumed, and so we know that you know coming out is going to be 70 uh, moles per minute of our propane. Uh, C3H8. Okay, so um, so we we were able to calculate that one first just from this other equation. So we had given ourselves two equations here to give us uh, zero degrees of freedom. Now we also have 25% excess water. Now when we say 25% excess water, um, we're not talking about 25% uh, more than the amount that was reacted, but uh, we're talking about how much it would take. Um, to completely react all of the propane, um, and, we, and then we tack on an additional 25%. So to completely react all of the uh, the propane. Um, so let me go, let me go down here, and I'll just fill this in. We had um, let's see, this is our conversion equation, okay? And then we just go ahead and plug in. Um, we're just going to go ahead and plug in the value here. And so that's going to be 70 moles of propane per minute uh, leaving. So now we have 25% excess water. Okay, so we need we uh, need three moles of water for every one mole of propane, and we saw that from this balance right here. Okay, so we had three to one, and uh, so that means that we need for complete conversion we would need. 600 moles of water per minute. Okay, so let's just do 25% more than that. 
Okay, and that's going to give us 750 moles of water per minute. Okay, so that's um, that's how much is coming in. Okay, so this is going to be uh, 750 moles per minute coming in. Um, okay, so let's go down and now use a species balance. Okay, so species balance is accumulation equals in minus out plus generation minus consumption. Okay, and um, in this in this case we have uh, consumption of water and of the propane, but we um, have generation of CO and hydrogen. Okay, so in this case uh, we're going to write this balance right here, and um, and right now we know that um, if we have 130 moles per minute of C3H8 consumed. Um, then let's go ahead and calculate that uh, we had three uh, moles of CO that are formed for every time that reaction takes place, okay? So per one mole of, of um, propane, okay? Okay, so that gives us 390 moles per minute of CO. Okay, let's do the same thing for hydrogen now. Okay, so we have seven moles um, of hydrogen generated for every mole of, of propane. Okay, so that's going to give us that's going to give us 910 moles per minute of hydrogen. Okay, so let's um, let's calculate the amount of um, water coming out now. Okay, so we we um, we know how much was reacted of the propane, and there are three moles of water consumed for every mole of propane. And so that gives us a uh, total here of 360 moles per minute of hydrogen leaving. Okay, so, so let's just go back up here then and just fill in uh, some of these numbers. Um, so water is going to be 360 moles of water per minute uh, leaving. And then the CO is going to be 390, and the hydrogen is going to be 910. Okay, so if we just take the total of these, that's going to be 17, uh, 30 moles per minute total. And then if we just divide each one, you know, 70 divided by 17, 30, then that gives us the mole fraction of uh, propane. And then water is going to be 0 0.208. Um, we have carbon monoxide, it's going to be 0 0.225, and then we have hydrogen, which is 0 0.526. Okay, so that's the mole fraction. Those are the mole fractions of what's leaving. These are intrinsic, okay? Those are intrinsic properties, and these are extrinsic, okay? So they depend on an amount or a molar flow rate. These do not. Uh, you can take a small sample of that system, analyze it maybe with a gas chromatograph, and get that answer. Okay, so let's go on to a second example now. We're going to solve this with the uh, instead of with a, a species uh, balance, a molecular species balance. Now we're going to do this with an atomic or element balance. Okay, so our degree of freedom analysis is going to be just a little bit uh, different in this case. We're going to look at the number of reacting elements. Okay, in this case, the elements that we have are C, H, and O. Okay, so we can do a balance. Um, you know, we're going to be able to do a balance on each of those as long as they're independent. Okay, so that's going to be minus 3. We're going to have three equations. We do not have any reacting species. And then we're going to use the other two equations from the prior page. Okay, the 65% conversion of the propane and 25% excess water. Okay, so that's going to give us, um, that's going to give us, I put a negative there, that's going to give us zero degrees of freedom. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start filling this out. Let's do a, a carbon balance. Okay, so we need to know the number of moles of carbon coming in, but the only species that's coming in that has carbon in it is this propane. But we know that there are three moles Okay, so let me just zoom in here a little bit. Uh, three moles of carbon for one mole of C3H8. Okay, so that gives us the total moles of carbon 
that are coming in. Okay, and then, um, oh wait, I did this wrong. I should have done it up here. Okay, so three moles um, per one mole of C3H8. Okay, just going to erase that. Okay, and then uh, what's coming out is um, we're going to have uh, you know carbon compounds coming out. We have the propane and then the carbon monoxide as well. Okay, so let's come back down here. So this is going to be uh, the carbon leaving with the propane, and that's the carbon leaving with the carbon monoxide. In this case, it's going to be a 3 to 1 ratio as well. That's 3 moles of carbon for every 1 mole of C3H8. Okay, and then uh, here we have 1 mole of carbon for 1 mole of Cl. Okay, so now we have everything specified except that variable, and we can go ahead and solve for it. Okay, so I'm just going to rearrange um, and uh, solve for the molar flow rate of uh, CO, and that's going to be equal to 390 uh, moles of uh, CO per minute. Okay, so the same answer that we got uh, previously. Okay, so let's do this on the hydrogen as well now. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be 8 hydrogen. Okay, so that's going to be 8 uh, moles of hydrogen for every 1 mole of C3H8. Okay, and then in the water, that's also coming in with a hydrogen containing uh, compound, and that's going to be 2 moles of hydrogen for every 1 mole of H2O. Okay, so those will cancel and then it'll be left with uh, moles of H. Okay and then in the outlet uh, we're gonna have eight here and then two and um, then two. Okay so two, uh, eight, two and two moles per mole of that uh, compound. Okay so now we'll see that we have here, okay we can't just solve this now because we have two unknowns. We have an unknown here and we have an unknown here. So let's go on to the oxygen balance. Okay, so we're going to have uh, one mole of oxygen for one mole of water. Okay, and this is going to be one, and this is going to be one as well. Okay, so in this case, we only have one unknown in this equation. So let's just go ahead and, and calculate that. Okay, so this is going to be 750 minus 390 and then that will be equal to uh, 360 okay, um, moles of um, water per minute. Okay, again, same answer that we got previously. Now we can take this answer and substitute it in right there and then solve for our hydrogen. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for our hydrogen now. It's going to be 200 times 8 plus 750 times 2 minus 70 times 8 minus 360 times 2. And then I'm going to divide by 2 Okay, because of that uh, number there. Okay, so that's going to give us 910 moles of hydrogen per, per minute. Okay, so that's H2, not H. Okay, so um, so now we did it the second way using an element balance, and we got the same answers. Now let's do this with an extent of reaction instead. Okay, so remember that extent of reaction, when we talk about extent of reaction, we say that the final uh, molar, let's say we can just do flow rates here um, as well, is equal to the initial plus the stoichiometric coefficient, nu, uh, Greek letter nu, times um, xc. Okay, so there's uh, the extent of reaction. It's normalized by using this stoichiometric um, coefficient, okay, which is uh, the number out front. If it's a reactant, it's going to be negative. So stoichiometric coefficient for 
water is going to be negative 3, for propane it's going to be negative 1, for uh, carbon monoxide it's going to be negative, uh, positive 3, and then for hydrogen it's going to be positive 7. Okay, and so this is our extent of reaction equation. Um, we have information about uh, propane. So let's go just go ahead and calculate um, uh, Xc for, our, for, uh, for propane, but it's going to be the same for all the other species as well. Okay, so um, if we start with the degree of freedom analysis um, here as well, we had five unknowns, okay? And then we have one reaction. That's going to be our um, Xc variable. Okay, so that's going to give us one more degree of freedom. And then we have four reacting species. So that's going to be negative 4. Okay, and then non-reacting species, we have 0, and then two other equations, which are the percent excess and the fractional conversion. Okay, so um, we know that uh, you know what's coming out is going to be uh, 70, and then what uh, came in was 200. Okay, so we can go ahead and, and compute that um, Xc is going to be 130. In this case, it's going to be moles per minute. Okay, that's the extent of reaction of our um, for for this reaction. So, so now we can just write the other extent of reaction equations for the other species, and go ahead and calculate um, the moles final for each one. Okay, so we have what's coming in times the stoichiometric coefficient uh, times Xc. So in this case, we have um, 750 coming in moles per minute of water minus the 3 times 130 moles per minute. Okay, and that's going to give us 360 moles per minute uh, leaving. Okay, so let's do the same thing for hydrogen. Okay, that's going to be positive 7. We had 0 coming in. Also for CO, we had 0 coming in. Uh, that's going to be 3 for this one. Okay, so we're going to get the 9, 10, and then um, for CO, it's going to be 3, 90. Okay, and uh, so that concludes this, uh, this tutorial um, on doing a degree of freedom analysis and calculating the final compositions with three different approaches. The first one was a species balance. Okay, on the molecular level, so from the molecules. Uh, and then we did another one on atomic balances. And then a third one using extent of reactions. And so the degree of freedom analysis is just a little bit different in each case. But the main principle is that you really just have a certain number of variables minus a certain number of equations. And they're just a little bit different for um, each approach.